Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we are now going to be diving into the story that the Cleveland Browns and quarterback Deshaun Watson have agreed to a contract restructure that shakes things up a little bit in terms of what the future of Watson in Cleveland could look like, or at least what the public perception has been versus what may actually occur. So we actually talked about Deshaun Watson earlier this week there were some comments made from former NFL linebacker Manti Teo, who is now a host on Good Morning Football, and he said that he thinks that the Browns should pull a Russell Wilson or pull a Denver Broncos and move on from Watson despite all of the money left on his contract like the Broncos just did with Russell Wilson. And I push back on that saying that yeah, in theory it shouldn't mean all that much in terms of impacting the actual structure of your team that you have all of this dead cap money, but hopefully you can just sort of start from scratch and start over. Well, the difference with the Browns is the Browns are actually a very good team overall, and they're coming off of a historically good season from their defense. They have a number of pretty good offensive players as well. We'll see what version of Nick Chubb we get. I believe he is starting the season on the physically unable to perform list, so he's going to be out for at least the first four weeks of the year. But, you know, once he comes back, you have some good receiving threats as well. Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, and David Njoku. A very good blocking offensive line, especially so in the run game. Would like to see some steps forward in the passing game, specifically from offensive tackle Jedrick Wills Jr. But overall, you're looking at a very good squad. And that's the difference between them and the Broncos. Is I feel like the Broncos already didn't have a lot of cornerstone pieces that... They were able to a little bit, you know, just start fresh and expectations won't be all that high, but hope to put together a new system with the Browns. I mean, after this season, at this point, obviously no choice but to play out this season with Deshaun Watson. Um, I don't even think that was the suggestion from Teo in particular, but you're not going to move forward willingly with Jameis Winston or Dorian Thompson Robinson. Thompson Robinson as your starting quarterback out of nowhere. So Watson's going to play out this season. If this season goes really, really horribly, I could have talked myself into it. But the difference is now though, with this contract restructure, it opens up over it over $35 million of cap space for this upcoming season in 2024 turning it from the cap hit to a signing bonus. And while that's that's great and it opens up cap space that will be able to roll over to next season, which will be necessary because they are going to be, at least as things currently stand, one of the most expensive teams in the NFL for 2025, projected to be $44 million over that salary cap. So restructuring this deal does help to um, free up some cap space and manage their future situation. But as a part of this deal as well, it now makes Deshaun Watson's dead cap hit for 2025 $172 million. For 2025 alone, then it would be another $99 million in 2026. That feels so unlikely in terms of the Browns still being able to be a functional team while having basically half of their cap be tied up in a player that no longer plays for you. And again, it would be one thing if the Browns were younger and were trying to sort of build up a new identity for themselves like the Broncos are. But the Browns just made the playoffs last year. Not just that, they made the playoffs with, I think they had five different starting quarterbacks at some point throughout the year, and Joe Flacco was the one to to take them there. And Joe Flacco, he's great. He ended up, he ends up winning co- comeback player of the year, and that's awesome. But you feel like Deshaun Watson should at least be able to give you that level of production that Joe Flacco gave in his age 39 season, I think it was, to close out the year. So ultimately, 
this is a situation where I don't think there's an easy out for Deshaun Watson. If that were to be the case, I don't think it would be until 2026 because of the fact that there is just so much money tied up into him, whether he is actively on the roster or not, to the point where, additionally, the Broncos had the 12th overall pick. They took the sixth quarterback off the board because this was obviously a weird year in terms of being offense heavy, and it was a record six quarterbacks taken in the first 12 picks. But, you know, generally speaking, they, they were still up towards the top of the NFL draft. The Browns don't expect to be in that range whatsoever. Now, if they somehow end up falling apart this season, which, again, with that defense just existing, I really don't think is possible. But let's say, hypothetically, the Browns end up picking in the top seven or so. I'm all for, yeah, sure, you can go take the quarterback. But even then, I think it's... I think it's really hard to muster up again. $172 million in dead cap is just something that you really can't overcome. You're not going to have a team outside of that, and it's going to be all wrapped up in this one player that's not even available for you. I just don't think that it's an option. And, you know, in a perfect world, they could just, you know, make that contract disappear, but that's not where we're at right now. And also, Again, like I talked about, I think they have a good roster. I do feel like with the defense specifically and with some of the pieces offensively, they should be able to compete with just about anybody. They need the consistency from the quarterback spot. And they most certainly have not gotten that out of Deshaun Watson since trading for him. It's been four years now since we've seen him play at an elite level. Feels less and less likely by the day that we are going to see him return to that. But we talked about this earlier in the week as well. That his last two starts last season and weeks, I think it was 7 and 8, or it was 8 and 9, against the Cardinals and the Ravens, were two of Deshaun Watson's better performances. And... Again, in case you missed that episode, I understand that the stat, the pure stats against the Ravens in that game weren't necessarily great, but he played excellent down the stretch of that game in the second half. Perfect completion percentage and ultimately led a double-digit or a, a two-score comeback in the fourth quarter, even despite some adversity there with a missed kick along the way that required them to score three times. So, you know, ultimately... I I think that the Browns are going to be in a position this year where they're in the AFC North. The Ravens are always going to be a tough out, and they are, until anybody proves otherwise, going to be the king of that division. But the, the Bengals should also be back once again with Joe Burrow hopefully being healthy for the entirety of the season. And they are going to need to yeah it's great that you can lean on your defense a little bit but that's why I thought that Ravens game last year was so impressive because that was a game in which they won with both teams scoring over 30 points and you get a defensive touchdown in that second half as well to help add to the scoring if you're Cleveland but they can't just win based off of defense they're going to need to take steps forward on offense, and again, I think they're tied into this Deshaun Watson experiment at least until 2026 and probably until 2027. So I understand that he's not somebody that anybody's ever really rooting for, generally speaking, because of some of the off the field stuff as well. But if you're a Browns fan, I mean, the only way to go about this, in my opinion, is to root for Deshaun Watson to figure it out. And whether or not he ever does is still definitely up in the air, but if if he has a chance to, I feel like it's this year, and I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. The Browns are going to be competitive, 100%, but until Deshaun Watson fully proves to everybody that he is still the player that got him this massive contract extension, plus a number of draft picks as well, because that's what his value was. To be fair, they made that trade after knowing some of the off-the-field stuff was going on. So even then, it felt like the Browns overpaid for Deshaun Watson. What, Not to mention, it also sent out a pretty bad message given everything that was going on. But either way, this is this is where we're at with them. And again, I, think, I do think that 
the Browns have a chance to win this division and be competitive with just about any team in the NFL. But eventually Deshaun Watson's going to have to sort of return to form if this is going to be anything other than a failed experiment. And our host of the GSMC football podcast, Kenneth Grunfelder, mentioned earlier in a meeting the idea this probably wouldn't be the case if they had just stuck it out with Baker Mayfield. And I know it wasn't the crystal clear obvious decision, but even then, we we all knew that Baker Mayfield in his final season with the Browns was playing through injuries, and they didn't really care whatsoever. I don't know if it was something between him and Stefanski maybe that led to some sort of a disconnect. Not that I'm familiar with that storyline. This is purely out of speculation. But in 2021, again, they had him playing through injuries. Ultimately, it was a bad season. And then, again, you pay a boatload of money to a player that you know is going to miss time for a serious accusation and suspension. Not to mention you give up first-round picks along with it, and it just feels like a mess there off of that deal alone. But... That being said, still kind of came out of it, I wouldn't say unscathed, but came out of it with another playoff ap appearance in the next few years. So this is something that can be saved, but if it ever is going to, it's going to be on the shoulders of Deshaun Watson. So let us know what your thoughts are in the comments section. We are going to be moving into our final segment of the day where we are going to dive into the contract extension that was agreed upon between the Miami Dolphins and head coach Mike McDaniel. Is this a make or break season for McDaniel and the Dolphins or does this deal show that maybe the Dolphins see themselves as a little bit further away? We'll be diving into all that. But first, a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 